everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the story of Manetherin. But before getting into the video, first make sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content, especially TV show news as we are likely to be getting a trailer here soon. Are you excited? Also, let me thank the video sponsor NordVPN, but more on them a bit later. Let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers running all the way through the fourth book of the series, The Shadow Rising. If you have not finished the first four books of the series, watch this video at your own risk. You have been warned. So as I mentioned, today we're going to be chronicling the rise and fall of the incredibly influential and powerful nation of Manetherin. We'll take a look at the founding of the nation, what life was like in ancient Manetherin, how the government worked, and what the nation was known for. And then we'll talk about the eventual collapse and its legacy. So grab some calf, have a seat, and join me as I tell the story of Manetherin. Let's get started. Roughly 3,000 years prior to the start of the story, the world was in absolute chaos. The once great world government and societal structures like the Aes Sedai were completely gone, as former male Aes Sedai, poisoned by the taint on Sidene, went mad and not only killed billions, but also moved continents, formed mountains, erased lakes and rivers, and displaced the few survivors of humanity. It was really a horrible place. During this time, an area that was previously a bed of a great sea was raised in the upheaval, and the mountains of mist were formed from this seabed. Fast forward a little bit, as the last male Aes Sedai were killed, gentled, or they died of natural causes, the breaking slowly comes to an end and the remaining people of the world were left to rebuild civilization. In the first few hundred years after the end of the breaking, the peoples of the world settled into a few areas and started fledgling cities and small nations. These nations would grow and consolidate over the next couple hundred years. Now, one of these nations grew up around the base of the Mountains of Mist and the extremely fertile lands to the immediate east of the mountains. This land would later become known as Manetherin, and its capital was a city that grew near the very base of the mountain next to a river system with powerful rapids. Around a hundred years after the breaking, Manetherin had consolidated enough of the communities in the surrounding area to be considered a nation. As Manetherin grew, so did the other nations of the world. Eventually, battles between these nations would break out over resources, politics, and power. Manetherin itself grew to the point that it had border disputes with neighbors Coromanda, Safer and Arid Hall, all of this while the forces of the Shadow were still multiplying in the far north in the Great Blight. Realizing that these conflicts between the nations did nothing but weaken humanity while the Shadow grew stronger, the Queen of Aramella, an Aes Sedai named Mabriam al-Insharid, proposed a standing alliance among the great nations of the time. This alliance, which would become known as the Compact of the Ten Nations, was signed by Queen Sorella I. Marina of Manetherin in 209 after the breaking, just seven years after the completion of the construction of the White Tower. Now, Queen Sorella was an Aes Sedai, which was common for many queens of the era, and it's likely that the connection of all the monarchs of the world as Aes Sedai was actually vital in solidifying the compact. It was said that Queen Mabriam and Sharid, the Grey Aes Sedai, who was the driving force behind that compact, was in fact a Taviran. Now, the compact set up a mutual defense between the ten major nations that were members of the alliance, and for the most part, with a few exceptions, provided peace among those nations. For roughly the next 800 years, the nation of Manetherin would grow powerful and influential. The peace that came with the Compact of the Ten Nations provided the nation's residents and its government with time and resources to grow culture and grow in population. It was during this time that the capital city of Manetherin, often referred to as the Mountain Home, was expanded. Ogier stonemasons were contracted to build a great city, and Manetherin was said to be their greatest creation. The city was built into the mountain, and the Ogier 
stonemasons from all around the world would come just to stare at the city in wonder. An extremely well-maintained and beautiful Ogier Grove was also constructed in the city as well, along with a functioning waygate, which allowed for quick travel between other groves and by extension other cities. Now there were other cities in the nations that were constructed with Ogier help as well, displaying the wealth of the nation having at least four Ogier built cities. Korartharin, a city located in the heartland of Manetherin, Jara Kopen, a city in the foothills of the Mountain of Zemist, Shenayin, a city that sits in the present day site of Jahana, which is the capital of Gildan, those were all built by Ogier stonemasons in addition to the main capital city of Manetherin. Also during this time, the economy of Manetherin flourished. Due to the land of the nation being a former seabed, it was ripe with nutrient-rich soil, and Manetherin had some of the most fertile farmland in the Westlands. Additionally, the mountains of mist were full of gold and silver, along with other metals such as iron and copper. The combination of precious metals and agriculture made Manetherin an economic powerhouse. Gold coins were minted by Manetherin and served as the reserve currency for many other nations of the Westlands due to the high quality of their gold coins. Now, to facilitate their trade empire, Manetherin built a massive system of paved highways and roads to make travel between cities and towns easy. Many of these highways and their remnants remain until the current age within Manetherin's boundaries. Now, Manetherin was governed by a monarchy that appears to have passed to either male or female descendants, so basically the firstborn. Most of the historical kings and queens of Manetherin were lost to time, and we have very little information about who governed, but it is possible that there were many fewer monarchs than other nations appears, because many times the queen was an Aes Sedai, and therefore very long-lived. There appears to have been a very strong genetic ability to channel in the Manetherin nobility, so in the people of Manetherin as well. What we do know is that there were many lords who were often referred to as first lords by the people, and they ruled individual provinces within the nation. They apparently spoke a very elegant dialect of the old tongue and were quite powerful politically in Manetherin. The army of Manetherin was the strongest in the world as well. They would later be called the sword that could not be broken due to their staunch defense of the compact of nations and their fight against the shadow. Many of the best warriors in the world would come to join the army of Manetherin, specifically a special forces group known as the Band of the Red Hand, which was one of the most famous fighting forces of all time. But we'll talk more about the army in a moment. Before getting to that, however, let me mention the video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the world's best provider of VPN services. Now, what is a VPN, you might ask? A VPN is a service that basically masks your footprint on the internet, helps protect your privacy, helps protect your personal information and location, and it basically allows you to watch other content from other countries and locations in the world. Basically, a VPN lets you browse the web from another location of the world, keeping your internet service provider and any website or app you might be using from tracking what you do, what your interests are, and basically selling your information. It's absolutely necessary if you're an internet user, and the good news is, it's really cheap. The better news is that it's even cheaper if you use my code. <laughs> Just click the link in the description of the video and you will get an even better deal on an already low price. I'm talking like a couple bucks a month. You also really support the channel by doing so. Thanks a ton guys, and now let's get back to the video. The peace that accompanied the Compact of the Ten Nations lasted for nearly 800 years. But sometime around a thousand years after the breaking, an absolutely massive army of Trollocs and other shadow spawn poured from the Blight and began an assault on the nations of the Westlands that would last over 350 years. Now again, think about this. The war of power that brought on the breaking of the world lasted for 10 years. The Dark One's prison was only open for about 110 years before it was sealed. The Trolloc Wars lasted 350 years. Now during the first 100 years, Manetherin earned the nickname as the Thorn in the Dark One's Foot as they were an ardent defender of not only their own nation, but the other nations of the compact. They would travel and fight anywhere, and their armies were known for answering pleas for aid from allies. Now, around 1150 after the breaking, about 150 years into the Trolloc Wars, the King of Manetherin was a man named Thorin Altorin Alban. Now, directly to the north of Manetherin was the nation of Eridhal, which was led by King Balwin Mael. Now, the two kings had four 
formed a very close relationship as a result of the fighting, and they were strong allies in their war against the Shadow. Now, King Thorin of Menethrin grew worried that King Balwin of Arid Hall was losing faith in the forces of the Light, and he sent a delegation to Arid Hall that was led by his son, Kar Al Thorin Al Torin. The purpose of the delegation was to affirm their mutual commitment to the Pact of the Ten Nations and to the War of the Shadow. Now, unknown to King Thorin, a man named Mordeth had been advising King Balwin of Arid Hall. Mordeth had corrupted the king and convinced him to murder the delegation from the Netherin and imprison Carr. Carr was tortured in his captivity, but he did eventually escape and he returned to Manetherin. King Thorin was furious, obviously, and sent an army to exact revenge and get justice for what had been done to his delegation and his son. However, when the soldiers of Manetherin arrived at Arid Hall's capital, also called Arid Hall, there was no one there and there was nothing alive in the city at all. The people and all of the animals had vanished without a trace. The army of Manetherin, sensing a great evil in the place, renamed it Shadar Logoth, and the nation north of Manetherin, called Arid Hall, fell. Manetherin had earned its nickname as a thorn in the Dark One's foot because of their strict adherence to the Compact of the Ten Nations, meaning that they would ride to the aid of any ally that asked for help. This was something that the other nations of the Pact did a little less frequently than Manetherin, for they were always afraid of being invaded while they were away. Now the Shadow and the Dreadlords in command recognized this and they laid a plan to attack Manetherin directly. Now first they attacked one of Manetherin's neighbors. While it's unknown which of the neighbors they attacked, it can be assumed that it was the large nation of Coromanda, which encompassed much of modern day Andor and Kyrian. The Shadow sent a large attack there with the intention of drawing away help from Manetherin. The armies of Manetherin marched and fought in the Battle of Bakar, where they thoroughly routed the Trolloc army. Now, meanwhile, the Dreadlords mounted a massive offensive on the Manetherin homeland. When King Aemon Alcar Althorin heard of the Shadowspawn assaulting Manetherin, he and his army marched day and night straight from the field of Bakar to defend their homeland. This was said that they marched five straight days. They sent riders to the other nations of the world asking for aid, as Manetherin had so freely given aid in the past. He even asked the Amarlin seat, Tetsuan Sadai directly for aid. He was told that he would need to hold for three days before reinforcements could arrive. So he and his battle and travel-worn forces marched through the night for five days and took a defensive position on the banks of the Tarandrella River and held off the Trollic forces that numbered well over 750,000 Shadowspawn. They held off the Shadowspawn for at least three days, but no help came. Unknown to King Aemon at the time, the Amarlin had betrayed Manetherin and deliberately delayed the response due to her jealousy of King Aemon's wife, an Aes Sedai named Eldraine. They held on for six more days before realizing that they had been betrayed. King Aemon realized that all was lost, and so he ordered a staged retreat into the heartland to delay the Shadow Spawn from overrunning the countryside so that the civilians could escape. However, when the citizens of the land received word that the king had ordered them to leave and escape rather than leave, they picked up what weapons they could, pitchforks, old swords, knives, and they came to the aid of the army. 50,000 civilians showed up to make a last stand and save their country. Despite the reinforcements, the army was eventually defeated, and a final battle was fought at a site that later became known as Amon's Field, which would later then become Emmons Field. There, King Aemon and the remaining army were completely destroyed. In a fit of fury over her husband, also her warder's death, Eldrin Sedai pulled more of the one power than she could hold and destroyed the remaining Trollocs and Dreadlords, but also destroyed herself at the same time. She also destroyed the city of Manetherin, thus ending the Great Kingdom and the nation falling to Shadowspawn in the Trolloc Wars. After the fall of Manetherin, the land would eventually be resettled. The modern nations of Murindi, Andor, and Gildon were all once a part of Manetherin, and its influence is felt throughout history. Many of the people that lived near the capital would lose the memory of their past, but their connection to the Old Blood would remain strong. Later, as Perrin Abara, Matrim Cawthon would come from this area, as well as many others who could channel strongly, like Nynaeve Almira, Egwene Alvir, and Boda Cawthon. The nation of Manetherin would play a large part in the future of the Wheel of Time world. So that's it for the story of Manetherin. What do you guys think of Manetherin? Do you think it would make a great spin-off series for the TV show? 
Let me know what you think in the comments of the video. Please also, again, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. That's what I make here. If you like it, subscribe. Check out the Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing here. And do not forget to check out NordVPN and get that really cheap, guys. You really should have that. Thank you for watching. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do My mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?